Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and start in here. Let me get you guys settled here. Okay, good. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, let me go ahead and go up to our where we are. Um, so hopefully everyone's doing all right. Um, and uh, oh, Anjali's here. Hold on, need more current. Okay, good. Um, if you came in late, just give me a little chat so I know to mark you here. Um, I just got you, Anjali. Um, today we're going to um, go over the quiz and then we're going to finish up the notes 8B. We probably will not. Um, gotcha, Eva. We probably will not get to the summary just yet um, today, it looks like. Um, but we'll kind of, you know, go through that a little bit more next class. Um, so today we're going to be finishing 8.3, hypothesis test for means. You have 8.1, 8.4 due tonight. Um, I know some people commented and said that it kind of I screwed up and it's due. It was it, it, I made it due at midnight this morning, which is not correct. So I'll go ahead and fix that later. So just go ahead and do it, and I'll I'll change that and fix that. Um, connect math um, eight three is due on Thursday, and the next Tuesday will be chapter the first one for chapter nine. It's not super long, but it is going to be due, and you're only going to have five days to kind of do it because we're going to go through it on Thursday, and you'll have five days to get it done by next Tuesday. Um, office hours, these are my office hours down here um, that are going to be for now to the end of the semester. Please note I have this 11 p.m. to midnight on Thursday, so if you have qu homework questions um, and you're finishing up your homework on Thursday, go ahead and feel free to you know, to zoom in and chat with me and we'll, we can share your screen. I can share, you know, my screen and we can talk about things. Or you can actually be helpful if you shared your screen. Um, so this is, um, you know, hopefully maybe we'll, you know, eliminate some of those desperate emails I get at 11.50 at night. Um, another quick comment, if you have a bad internet connection, and a lot of you guys do, um, use the phone audio option when you sign in. Right, so in other words, when you sign in, take the phone one, and I don't know why audio shouldn't take up that much bandwidth, but it sure does, so this makes a big difference. It will, it will make this connection a lot better, a lot faster, so I highly, highly recommend it. Um, can you drop this class? Yes. You can drop it with a pass not pass, um, and you will get, um, it will, I'm sorry, you can drop it with a, with a um, XW which is different than an EW, it's an extreme withdrawal, which is just for COVID-19, because we know that a lot of you guys have, are having issues, and um, anytime between now and the final, you can just, there's this fill, form you fill out, it's um, available on Canvas, and also, if you want, you can take it pass, not pass, uh, but again, not all transfer institutions will take it. CSUs and UCs will take it this semester as long as it's not a class in your major. So if you're a bio major, you have to take all your bio classes for a grade. Um, and then, you know, I have those in the announcements. Okay. Um, if you haven't done an assignment, that's okay. Yeah, yeah totally, yes. One quick question on that. Um, so if we do a pass not pass and you're a nursing major, would we have to receive the class to get a full, an actual grade for it then? Or right. would, how would that work, you know? See, and that's the thing. Like, I don't know. The private schools and the nursing institutions I don't know how they're going to take it. So if you have an idea of where you're going to go, you should contact them and see, do you, or email me a list of nursing schools, and I can try to find out maybe, right, because a lot of people have the same yeah. question. Um, but, but, but you're right. I guess I could send you an email. Then. Yeah. Um, and then we can try to figure out, because I'm sure a lot of people have that same question of, you know, well, nursing schools, because yeah. I'm going to guess like 15% of you guys are nurses who just need this class to, in order to um, get into nursing school. And it'd be great if you can take it pass on pass, because then it wouldn't hurt your, your um, GPA. And that'd be almost like a bonus for you, kind of, in a way. Um, but, right. um, but I don't know if they'll take it. That's the problem. I know the UCs and the CSUs okay. take it, but the nursing schools, those are all different, right? If it's... If it's a private one, then that, that's, that's going to change things. 
So yeah, good question, great question. One I've been wondering, but I just don't know who to ask or where to check. So give me some names of nursing schools and I'll, I'll look into that. Um, if you haven't done an assignment, just do it, that's okay. It's totally fine. I'm being really flexible on you guys um, being late with this stuff. Um, you know, I'm I, I, I will take off some credit, but not all the credit. Um, if you're late for Connect Math, I'm only taking off 20% now instead of 50%. <laughs> Sorry, I just swallowed some air. And um, <clears throat> if you are um, late getting these quizzes and notes in, remember all the quizzes and notes in this class, you need to upload those into, um, into Canvas. So make sure that you um, do all those. So every single lecture, there is a quiz and a page of the notes that I want you to upload, and that's worth 60% of your, your participation grade. So if you're here and you're not uploading those, you're only getting 40%, 4 out of 10 points. If you're not here and you're doing those, you're getting 6 out of 10 points. So you really need to do those because those are important. Don't email them to me. Upload them in Canvas under assignments. All right, so let's go ahead and start in on what we're doing this class. Just a quick review. Critical values. So critical values are the, those are those, that's that step two, that where you draw a picture, it's that, that number that separates, right, the unusual from the usual. So here that I'd shade this rejection area, I put in my critical value, this number, that's fixed to determine, it's determined entirely by alpha, right? So that has nothing to do with your sample at all. It's part of the problem, it's part, part of your, your setup, right? It's, it's all about alpha. And you use the t-table to find those. Um, when do I use a t-distribution versus a, versus a z-distribution? So you guys chat with me, tell me, or, or just speak out and tell me, when do I use t versus z? Why would I use, when is a t, when is a z? Waiting for you guys. Me for a t-distribution? Yep. Uh, and other people give me some chats in here. Tell me. I want more than one answer. When do I use a T? When do I use a Z? Okay, Corey. Z, yeah. uh, we're using proportion for the V. Uh huh. And we can remember it by mean with the T or yeah. I forgot the other one. Easy peasy. All right, so this is going to be a mean. Because it's me, Mr. T. Great. So that's that's why this one is a T distribution. Because it's a mean. Anytime you're talking about um, about T distribution, that's that goes with a mean. So T distribution, we must be using a mean because means and T and T distributions go together. So what do you do? You look it up on the T table. Right, so degrees of freedom is n minus 1. n is the number of the sample size, the number of samples you took. Right, a sample size of 20 would mean that your degrees of freedom, your n is 20, your degrees of freedom would be 19, one less. Then make sure you choose the correct sign. Your table is going to give you everything in positive numbers. If it's left tailed, you know all the z scores on the left side are going to be negative. Z scores on the right would be positive, z scores on the left are going to be negative. All right, and then. If it is a Z distribution, when do I use a Z distribution again, guys? When do I use a Z distribution? Proportion. Yep, proportions. Proportions. And remember that easy peasy. Easy peasy. That's kind of the, the just a, this is just a way of remembering things. Remember proportion. Z, P, Z, easy, P, Z, proportion, which means a P hat or a P naught, and that would use a Z distribution. So Z distributions are for proportions. How do you get them? Again, look it up on the T table with degrees of freedom infinity, because the last row of the T table, the bottom row of the T table, that's uh, this bottom row here, right? These are my degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom infinity. This is this is my z table down here. This bottom row. It's the z. It's the entries from the z table that I need. I only need a handful of them because these tests only use a handful of uh, possible alpha values. 
Okay, great. And then, again, remember, if it's right tail, it should be positive. If it's left tail, that critical value should be negative because the z scores on the left side are negative. If it's two-tailed, then you have a positive and a negative both. All right, um, the test stat. Okay, so the test stat is the z-score for your sample. So again, critical value is part of the problem. This is based upon alpha. The test stat is the z-score for your sample. This is based upon your sample. So how do you find it? By finding the z-score for your for your statistic. So it's either going to be your, your x-bar or your p-hat. So it's going to be your p-hat or your x-bar, depending on whether it's a proportion or a mean, minus your population proportion or mu, uh, depending on whether it's a proportion or a mean, and then divided by the standard deviation over square root of n. So here again is the steps. If for whatever reason this is the first page of your 8B notes, if for some reason you did not write them down last class, you should take a picture of these right now because I'm going to remove this in just a few seconds. But these are the steps. First, set your hypotheses, H0 and H1. Figure out which one's the claim. Right, and maybe write claim next to it. And remember, if your claim is H0, then maybe you're in parentheses you're going to write the word reject because rejecting H0 would reject your claim. If your claim is H1, then maybe in parentheses write support next to it because if you're claim is H1, then rejecting H0 supports your claim. And then find the critical value from the table and draw a picture, right? So you're going to draw your little picture here, put in your critical value in shade, um, and then find your test stat. So compute your test statistic, your z-score for your sample, and then make your decision. See which one is further from the, from the center. So if your test stat is way out here, then it's unusual. It's further from the center, you're going to reject H0 because it's in that rejection region. If your H not, if sorry, if your test stat is in here, then it's not unusual, and you would not reject H not. So, put your test stat in the picture and figure out whether you're going to reject H not or not reject H not. Again, this is the rejection region over here. This is the non-rejection region, and then summarize the results. Then I'll type in rejection region. Reject. And maybe I should move that closer so you can see it. So this that's that section, which is a little bit hard to say, see. Um, okay. Um, and then summarize the results for your claim, in terms of your claim. All right. So here is the lab problem from last class. Um, I will go ahead and do this one, just in case you guys have forgotten or are quite, aren't quite familiar with it. So let's go ahead and go through, through this one. Um, Robert, can you go ahead and read this for me? Lab problem three. Use the following procedures. Uh oh. That's okay. Just read the percentage. That's okay. The percentage of physicians who are women is 27.9%. The survey of physicians employed by a large university health system, 45 of 120 randomly selected physicians were women. Is this sufficient evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the proportion of women physicians at the university healthcare system exceeds 27.9%? Perfect. All right, so first we need to figure out what the stuff is. So. The percentage of women physicians who are women is 27.9%. This is not a claim, necessarily. This doesn't say, this is a statement, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. Um, in a survey, aha, this is a survey, so this is where my survey stuff happens. Um, the largest university, 45 out of 120, were women. Okay. So, first of all, is this a proportion or is it a mean? Proportion or a mean, guys, what do you guys think? Proportion. Okay, so here's the here's how you can figure out one way. There's three different ways. What, Ellen, try to think of one way of figuring out that it is a proportion. It's a proportion. Why is it? Find there's three different possibilities of finding it here. But yep, one is it's a percentage. In a sense, right here's my percentage here we're looking at, and this is also a percentage in a sense. This is 45. So percentage or um, fraction, right? 
it is 45 out of 120. So that's one way. This is my p hat. p hat equals 45 out of 120. Um, another way of doing it is what? Yeah, there's no, it doesn't say mean or average. If you look here, there's nowhere in here is the word mean or average. And 100% that will work for you. Because a mean or average, the mean problem, I have to give you the mean. Um, the average is another word for mean. So I have to give you, it'll have to say mean or average somewhere in the problem. It has to. It doesn't say mean or average. Then it's most likely a proportion. The last thing is it literally says proportion in this particular case. All right, so then you know it's a proportion. All right, so the next question I'm going to ask you is, I, in the proportion, I have to give you the p hat. This is my sample. It's my, see, in a survey, that means it's a sample. So this 45 here, it's either going to be the percentage. I'm either going to give you the percentage, or I'm going to give you the number of successes, the number of yeses. So is this the number of yeses, the number of women who said yes, or is this the percentage? And that's what you have to figure out. And just you got to read it and sort that out. Um, this part is N of 120. That's my N. But which one is this one? Is this 45 women or is this 45 percent? It doesn't say percent on it. It says 45 were women. That means 45 women. So this is this is my number of successes. So that means my P hat is going to be 45 out of 120. All right. So that's my that's going to be my P hat, which. Um, We'll worry about that later. I think it's 0.375, I think is what it is. Okay. Um, and what else do we have? Is there enough evidence at the 0.05 level of significance? Aha. This is 0.05 level of significance. That's my alpha. And then to conclude, uh, this is the part I was looking for. To conclude, the proportion exceeds 27.9. That's my claim. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find evidence to conclude something. That's my claim. I'm concluding or I'm claiming the proportion exceeds 27.5. So that's my claim. My claim will be, hang on, my claim will be, claim is the proportion P exceeds, is greater than, 0.279. So there's my claim. All right, so then I need to figure out what my H0 and my H1 is. So my H0, oops, H0 is going to be, um, is my H0, is my H0 greater than 0.279? Is that right? Or even yeah. equal to? Is that is that right? Yeah. Here's the thing. H naught is not equal to 0.279. What's your hypothesis? Would you say? Would someone say, "Oh, my Christopher Columbus's hypothesis is flat. Is flat. Does that make sense?" He has to say something is flat. The world is flat. My my hypothesis is not going to be equals to 0.279. My hypothesis is that something equals it. What equals it? P equals it. So don't forget your P or your mu. My H dot is that P equals 0.279. And is this my claim? Is that the same thing as my claim? Are these two the same? No, they're not. Because this is greater than and this is equals to. Right? H dot is always, always, always equal to. This is um, greater than. So that means that H naught is not my claim. H1 is my claim, so H1 is that P is greater than 0.279. So remember, one of these has to be my claim. If it's not H1, if it's not, sorry, so if it's not H0, then I have to make H1 my claim. And very often, H1 will be my claim, because very often I'm trying to prove that something differs or something's not the same in some way. All right, so my claim is that it exceeds, exceeds so this is my claim, H0 is always equal to, so this is my claim, I'm looking to do this, to, I'm looking to do this whole thing um, to maybe support or not support my claim, because again, rejecting H-naught would support my claim. If I reject 
if I were to reject H naught like that, that would support my claim. You guys understand what I'm saying? If this is bad, then that means this is good. So that would support my claim. So that's why we use the word support here when H1 is my claim. All right, step two. Step two. Uh, find the critical value. All right, so we're going to look up our, our T table. And let's see, it's a proportion. So we're going to use the very bottom row. So let's see, my alpha is 0.05. How many tails is it? It's greater than, so it's one tail. So let me draw out my little picture here. Greater than. So it's going to be over here somewhere. And I'm going to shade in this part over here. This is my rejection region. And I need to find my critical value. So I'm going to go to my T-table. And I'm going to say, okay, it's one-tailed. Alpha's one-tailed. 0.05 right here. So I want the second column. Everybody can kind of see that. Alpha's one-tailed. Right-tailed, left-tailed is one-tailed. So alpha's 0.05. And it's a proportion, so I'm going to use the very bottom number. Easy PZ. This is my Z table. This bottom row is my Z table. All this up here is my T table. Bottom row is my Z table. Proportion Z. Bottom row. 1.645. So 1.645. That's my critical value. CV equals. 1.645, and it's positive, so I mean, I'll round it 1.65, um, so I'm going to pop it right in here. 1.65, great, good. Let me move it over a little bit so it's right below it. Okay, now, that's my second step. My third step is to find my test stat. So third step, test stat, a very bad three. All right, so my test stat, oh, I better try my pen for this one. Okay, so test stat is going to be, it's equal to, this is a proportion, so it's going to be P hat. Ugh, terrible. P hat minus P naught. It's a naught. It's a terrible knot. Um, over um, square root of P Q. It's P naught Q naught over N. Or you can just call it P. You can, you can just call it P. They all suit P because I can't really write a knot. Okay. So let's see. The P hat is this guy up here. 45 out of 120. So I think that was 0.375, if I'm not mistaken. Yes? That's what everybody else told me last class. Yeah. So it's going to be 0.375 minus my P. All right, so you guys, listen up. This is where people get confused. My P is whatever I get for my claim. That is that number always, 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 always. Whatever's in your claim, that's your P or your mu. So P or mu, this thing right here is whatever you get in the claim. This one over here is whatever's from the sample. So this guy is the sample. Uh, let me try writing it. That's going to make my life easier, isn't it? Sample. Uh, so this one's from the sample. Always. And then this one's from the claim. Always. All right. So hopefully that will make things clearer. People get mixed up on these all the time. Whatever this guy is, mu or p, it's always from your claim, whatever your claim is. And then this one's from the sample. So 0.375 minus 0.279 divided by, oh, I'm going to need a lot of room for this one, 
times 0 0.721 divided by n. How many do we sample? How many do we sample? 100 and, 120? 120. Yes. Great. Uh-oh. No, oh, no, no. Okay. And what did you guys get for that? Two, uh, two point something. Two point. Three four. Three four or three five. Which one? Three four. Three four. It may depending upon rounding. If you got, if you, if you rounded somewhere along the way, you might have gotten three five. That's okay. Here's the thing. If you did not get this. If you did not get 2.35, 34, 35 when you did this, make sure you do this part first. The inside first. The whole inside first. Then square root that number. And then take the top part, find the top part, find the bottom part, and then divide them at the end. Don't try to do it all at once. Find the inside, square root it, set it aside. Find the top, divide it by the bottom. And give yourself like three or four decimal places there. Maybe four or five decimal places there, just to be safe. Okay. Um, any questions on this one? You guys have questions about this part? Okay. So again, remember, you, you really got to make sure you you're careful with that, with those um, how you do this. Make sure order of operations is really important. You got to find this inside first, then square root it, and then set it aside. Find the top, find the top by the bottom. All right. Step. Oh, and then put it in. Let's see. We got to put it in here. So 2.34, that's going to be way over here, right? So that's going to be my test stat, way out over there. So that's 2.34, that's my test stat. So absolutely, that's totally going to be in the rejection range. So when I go to step four, I will reject H naught. Oops. Reject H naught. Are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Here's the other thing. Because this pen is not any better than my finger. Um, because I've drawn this picture up here. I don't see this. That is my explanation for why I'm rejecting H naught. No picture. Then you have to say why. If you don't, if you don't draw a picture, you have to say because. The test stat 2.34 is further away from the mean than the critical value 1.65. But if you've drawn a picture and you've shaded the critical, the critical region, the rejection region, and you put the test stat clear than the rejection region, then you're totally fine here. You don't need to do anything else. And the last part is step five, which is talking about your claim. So I'm going to try to do this. Maybe I can do this this way. All right, step five. So here we go. Um, because we're in the rejection region, we had enough evidence. So I'm going to say enough evidence to, and then I have to figure out, well, what's my, where was my claim? My claim was H1. So I'm use the word support because rejecting H naught supports my claim. So I'm always going to use the word support here, support claim, and then write down whatever your claim is, that um, uh, that more than twenty seven point nine percent of uh, hospital was it hospital workers hospital. workers in the university were women or something like that. It was, I think that was the claim. All right. So, again, this is, um, there's two pieces here. This one here depends entirely upon whether you are in the guilty range or the not guilty range. And then this second part here, the support that comes entirely upon what does rejecting H not do for your claim?
rejecting H not supports your claim, you're going to write support here. If rejecting H not rejects your claim, then you write reject here. Since H one's my claim, I write support. If H not was my claim, I'd write reject there. And the other thing is, it's this is not the same thing. Okay, so let me pop, pop you guys back to me for a second here. This is not the same thing as saying that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim because not enough evidence to reject the claim is not very strong. It could still be true. Not enough evidence to reject the claim is not, it, it could be wrong, it could be not wrong. You don't know. There's not enough evidence. Enough evidence to, re to support the claim, that's certain. You're sure about that. So that's a much stronger statement, saying I have enough evidence to to support the claim, you know it's true. Not enough evidence to reject it means it might be true, it might not be true. So those are not the same thing. That's why it's really important to use the evidence based upon whether or not rejected H not and to talk about the support or the reject based upon what your claim is. That's why those are super, super important. So um, what I want us to do now is to um, go ahead and work on, I'm going to put you back in your rooms and we're going to work on, for the next 15 minutes, we're going to work on finishing up problems, quiz problems one and two, and we'll have some people go over them when we get back. Um, and then about pay attention um, and look at your, at your chat boxes, because right around 6.02 or 6.03, I'm going to tell you guys, or maybe 6, I'll tell you guys to take a break whenever you finish up. So finish up, or I'll tell you now. I'll tell you what, go back into groups, finish up quiz one and quiz two problems, and then at 6.03, take a break until, well, 6, 6.05, take a break until 6, 6.04, take a break until 6.14, and then we'll come back at 6.14. I'll bring you guys back in, okay?